kiss out of that and everything. How's it been in the contest so far? Hello everybody, Stephen Hamilton, KC9GMX here. I uh, thought I'd make a video, upload it to our channel on how I install uh, connectors onto a 50 ohm coax cable. I've worked with a lot of Elmers over the years and you know uh, everybody's got their own way of putting uh, connectors onto coax. I have my particular way that I like to do it which is using crimp on. Uh, I'm showing here the more traditional uh, PL259 type connector that most radio guys are familiar with and you'll, you'll have this uh, reducer right here the uh, the coax would slip up in the, the uh, reducer the braid would come back and fold over you'd insert the entire assembly into the uh, the body the center conductor would come out here you'd solder it on and you'd be done I personally I don't really like these type of connectors I don't uh, I, I, for me there are a lot of work to do yeah you know a lot of, a lot of other people may uh, have a a good way to do it that works for them. What works for me is uh, using crimp on connectors using a, a ratcheting crimp on tool like this. Uh, it'll crimp a collar onto the coax cable, uh, making a nice tight bond there. And then uh, solder the center conductor, heat shrink the uh, outside to give a little stress relief. And uh, I'll get started and show you what I, what I do here. The first thing I'll go into my connector box here and um, find the connectors that I'm wanting to use. One end will be PL259, that's what's actually going to go to my radio. The end female connector is going to go and uh, interface to the uh, half inch hard line that I'll be using to run to my base antenna. And that way I'm not having to try and use the hard line directly to the radio itself because that, that wouldn't fare very well. So we've got our connectors. Uh, we're also going to need a soldering iron or soldering gun like, like you see right there. Uh, we're going to need a nice sharp razor knife keep that. We've got our uh, shrink tubing uh, and some solder. I actually did notice in this package here it comes with some shrink tubing. I think you can see right there so lucked out there. A lighter to shrink the shrink tubing and of course our trusty dusty ratcheting uh, coax crimper tool here. Alright so here's the coax that I'm going to be using this particular coax. Uh, it's very simple off the shelf coax, it's nothing really special. RG8X, that's the size I'm using. And uh, we'll just go ahead and get started putting these uh, connectors on. We'll start out with the PL259. Do that one first. Open the little bag. You'll notice here we'll have our, our body. And it's got the uh, the threaded collar that actually screws on to the, the radio. And then we'll have our um, collar here, the back side. Start out with putting a length of uh, shrink tubing on, I don't know, something about that looks good to me. Doesn't have to be exact. We're going to thread that onto the unprepped coax. I'm going to thread the crimping collar onto the coax. And then we get to start you now one other step here. Take that off the body. I'm going to put that on the coax as well. Uh, make sure you get it in the right orientation there because it will only screw back on on the, the connector that way. So we got to make sure you do that. And then I'm going to start prepping the coax. And how I do that is, you know, a lot of people may get out the tape measure. That's fine. This is just what works best for me. This is how I've been doing it for years. Is, uh, you know, I kind of get started here judging um, how far I want the center conductor to be sticking out the tip of the uh, connector body here. And I'll mark with my fingernail at the bottom of the main, the wide part of the body right here. The bottom of that is where I'm going to cut uh, the outer shield and the dielectric. I'm going to cut both the, the outer jacket, the outer shield of the cable, and the dielectric. I'm going to cut that off all right there. Get started with that. Important, do not cut so deep that you cut into the center conductor. You really don't want to do that. So I'm just going to kind of work this blade around uh, getting through the outer shield, the outer jacket. Not quite all the way through the dielectric. Okay, so I got uh, the, the outer jacket, got that off. Uh, cut a little little more like I said don't go so deep that you're 
going all the way through the dielectric just yet. We're gonna, okay, we got the, the shield off there. Now we got the dielectric and I'm just gonna kinda, uh, well, sadly I did get deep enough to go through there. I was trying not to, but I've got that off enough that we can pull off and expose the uh, center conductor. Twist that back around so we don't have any uh, frayed wires making it harder to get through the body. Alright, so we've got that done. Step one. Like I said, we've got where the fat part of the body, we've got the center conductor that's going to poke right out the top. See, I think you could see that pretty good there. Next, I'm going to mark the bottom of the body altogether is where we're going to cut just the black jacket. Don't nick the outer shield. Okay, we're just going to ever so easily try and cut that around. I'm doing my best to keep this in, in the camera view. I'm sorry. I can't do camera and coax prep at the same time. And, uh, you know, as you, as you kind of bend that back, you'll see that, you know, it'll start to kind of tear along that score that you just made. So I'm going to... All right, so we got the, uh, the outer jacket exposed. We've got that little piece of the uh, jacket, I guess. The, we got the jacket cut off there. We've got the outer shield exposed. Don't unbraid it. Okay, you'll want to go ahead and leave it braided, but just go ahead and pull it back away from the di dielectric altogether. That way you can check and make sure that there's no pieces of wire still up against the dielectric. Okay, we don't want to have a, a short where we short the center conductor to the uh, outer jacket there. We're going to take our body and we're going to slide it down over the center conductor and the dielectric is going to fit up inside of the body and the braided jack and the braided shield is going to come up on the outside of the body. Let's see. This is actually what's going to grip onto the coax and uh, make it where the connect connector doesn't slide off there. So we've got our center conductor poking out the top. That's important. We're going to slide the crimp collar on there like that. Handy dandy ratcheting crimper. Slide that into the, uh, the spot there. And we're just going to make sure that it's all nice and tight on there. Crimp it down. Alright, so what we have there is nice and tight. I'm pulling quite a bit on that, and that's not going anywhere. Okay, so we've got the outer shield now is connected to the body. And we can actually go ahead and bring the threaded nut back up here. Bring our shrink tubing up. We're going to slide that up here. Slide that over a little bit there. That way it's still bridging the between the crimp collar and the actual coax. We're going to go ahead and melt that on there like that. You don't need to catch it on fire. Just kind of wick the flame over it. It'll, it'll melt down on there and give us a, a nice finished look. Okay. And I'll go ahead and get the soldering, iron, or soldering gun out now and we'll solder that center conductor on there and that one will be done. Done. Alright, so we got that soldered on there nice and well. I'm going to go ahead and get me some uh, some side cutters. I'm going to trim off the excess and then that one will be just a little nip off the tip. Don't need to get hog wild there. Okay, we have uh, one nicely finished uh, PL259 connector on the end of our RG8X coax. So I'll go ahead and start getting started on the other side with the end female connector and that's a little more involved. Shrink tubing, we're going to slip that down over the coax. Slip our crimping collar down over the coax. Now what? we've got two separate pieces here with our end connectors. In connectors, the pin is separate from the body, whereas the PL259, the pin is part of the body. So you don't want to lose that, or you don't have a connector. And what we're going to do here is, uh, one thing to make sure with the females is the, um, that you get the pin soldered on the right direction. Okay, The center conductor will go in one end, and the other end will insert up through the body. 
and actually receive the male pin of the end male connector. And I don't know that there's any way that I can show you on video which one is which, but this connector, which I mean, you really just can't see it. Uh, the the tip of this is actually slotted to where you know it'll actually expand with a you know if a a male pin slightly larger than than the receiver here, whereas the other end does not. It's solid metal, and it also I don't know if you can see it here or not. Let's see, maybe right around there somewhere. There's a a, a small hole on the side of the body of this pin, and that's to help. Uh, the solder kind of uh, wake up inside there whenever you're trying to solder that onto the center conductor of the coax. So that's about the only two ways that I can tell you which which end is which on these. Now again we're going to have to start kind of figuring out uh, where we need to be cutting our uh, wire part here on the coax. So center conductor will insert about that much into it. Again, that's give or take. I, I don't ever do this with a ruler. I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants. It's worked well for me over the years. That means I need to guesstimate the center conductor is going to be about there or so. I'm going to use my thumb nail there. Mark where I'm going to cut the uh, everything including the dielectric. So I'm going to cut that right about there. Okay so I got my center pin slid down onto the center conductor. I'm going to kind of check and make sure that everything looks like it's going to line up there, which it's not, okay? Because, like I said, the pin is going to extend to about the tip of the connector body. But look where, look at where down here falls. It's not even going to get to the uh, outer shield at all. So what I need to do is I need to get this more down here somewhere to be able to get to that outer shield which means I'm going to have to take my center pin off. I'm going to have to kind of gauge where did I need that to go. Okay, somewhere about there. And that's going to be about there. So I need to take about a quarter inch off that. Twist that back together. center pin. We'll go ahead and fit that back on there again. Like that. Check it again. Oh yeah, that's about right. Okay. Now, take off a little bit of the jacket. Expose that center braid. Just like we did with the PL259. Okay, now we have our outer jacket exposed. Fold it back just a little. Keep it braided. Just fold it back just a little. Alright, we're going to slide our pin back on there. That looks like it's going to come through pretty nicely. See that? Pushed it up there too far. Now I got to... There we go. I got it out. So that's good. Good for me. I'm going to go ahead and heat up the solder gun. And I'm going to solder this uh, center pin onto the wire here. And then we'll start crimping. Okay, we're going to get this centerpiece soldered on there. Okay. Um, this, is, this is an area where it takes a little bit of skill. Not skill, but practice, I guess. Um, because the center pin is going to want to keep sliding off there. And then on top of that, if you get any solder on the body like or on the outside of the pin like I just did it's gonna have a harder time sliding up inside the uh, connector body okay and if you hold it on there too long the the dielectric will start to melt so that's no good looks like I got a pretty decent looks like I got a pretty decent solder connection on there so I think I'll be happy with that. I will slide the body down over this. Like I said, it's going to have a little snap on it. Okay, I'm going to push that down over the dielectric. And hopefully I'll feel it click. 
Yep, I felt it click. Okay, so I'm all the way down on there. I'm going to bring up my crimping collar that's going to slide on over the body there. Sorry about that. I'm doing my best here, people. Handy dandy crimpers. Make sure the body stays down on there and the crimping collar stays all the way up and give it a good crimp. Don't know if you can see it here or not, but a lot of times uh, there will still be a little bit of a flare here at the end. That's okay. If the uh, shrink tubing slips over it, that's fine. I think this will slip over it like that. Okay. Throw a little heat on there. We're going to shrink that shrink tubing. Like I said, you don't need to catch it on fire. Just kind of wick it over there. If you want to use a heat gun, great. I don't have a heat gun. I have a cheap 50 cent lighter from the gas station. And that works just fine. Okay, so we're going to let that shrink all the way down on there. And there we have it. We have a end female on one end. PL259 on the other end. And uh, that way I can run this end to my hard line that's going to come down from the tower and this end to the radio. And that's a fine jumper I've got there. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, visit our club website at www.claycountyradio.webs.com and um, look forward to posting more videos on here for you guys. Thanks for watching.